So with the final weeks of the ATP season fast approaching and Elkrest pulling out of Basel next week, it kind of changes things with this race to world number one. There's three players in contention, Medvedev, Djokovic, Elkaraz. We're going to go through the most likely scenarios of each guy and see which one might actually happen and who's got the best chances. So let's start with Medvedev because he is the hardest road back to world number one. So let's say Djokovic and Elkaraz, for some reason, don't win any more matches for the rest of the year. They both lose first round Paris. They both lose all their matches at the ATP finals. Then Medvedev will have to win Vienna next week, win Paris the week after, and then go 3-0 and in the group stages, making the semi-finals, the ADB finals. That's the minimum requirement if he's going to get to world number one. So not very realistic. Of course, Medvedev could do all those things, but it's very unlikely that Djokovic, for example, is going to lose every match for the rest of the year. A more likely scenario for Medvedev, let's say he does win next week in Vienna and Djokovic and Alcaraz make it to the semi-finals of Paris, Medvedev would have to win Paris and then going into the ADB finals would have to hope that both Alcaraz and Djokovic don't make it through through the group stage. Maybe they win one match each and then Medvedev would have to win the entire event to get to world number one. So that's a more likely scenario for Medvedev, but he's basically going to win everything from now on and hope that Elkris and Djokovic again don't perform super well at the end of the year. So taking Medvedev out of the picture, because let's be honest, he kind of needs a miracle to get to world number one. And with Elkris injured, maybe he's halfway there. But let's stick with the two big guys. So Djokovic, how does he stay number one? So they're both not playing next week, so no points change next week. If Djokovic does win Paris and beats Elkaraz in the final, then going into the ATP finals, Djokovic would only have to win all group stage matches to make the semis to force Elkaraz to have to win the whole event. And even then, if Elkaraz does win the whole event, it won't be enough because they will be even on points. But Djokovic has played less events, which gives him the world number one ranking. Now let's look at Elkaraz's dream scenario. So if Djokovic does lose in the Paris semifinals and Elkaraz does win the whole event, he's going to have to hope that Djokovic doesn't make it past the semi-finals and he himself will have to make the final at the minimum to get that world number one ranking back. If Djokovic does get better than a semi-final in Paris or does make it into the finals of the ATP finals, then Alcaraz is going to have to do a lot more. But it really comes down to who wins Paris, not just between Djokovic and Alcaraz, but also with Medvedev. Whoever wins Paris, if it's one of these guys, it's going to put them in a really good position going into the final tournament of the year at the ATP finals. So there it is. A little bit of a confusing situation, I guess. Uh, it's kind of easy for Medvedev. You know, if he doesn't win everything from now on, he's probably not going to be world number one uh, unless disaster strikes Djokovic and, you know, Elkris is already injured. So that's also... A Maybe a chance he could be number two in the world, but to be number one, he's going to have to hope that Djokovic has the worst end to a season ever. Uh, for Alcaraz, you know, he's going to have to do a couple of things right. He's going to have to hope his body holds together. That's the hardest part for Alcaraz. The world number one ranking is probably not even in his head. It's just staying healthy. Now, if Djokovic does win Paris, which he has done many times, and he does do decent at the ATP finals, which again, he's done many times, he should be world number one. So it should be Djokovic at the end of the year, unless something catastrophic happens to Novak or somebody has an absolute blinding end of the year. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to be world number one? Do you think Alcaraz can sneak it out in the end, even though he's not playing next week? Or do you think Medvedev can come from nowhere to take it at the end? But most likely going to be Djokovic. And of course it should be. He's won three slams this year.